Okay, so you have your HomePod mini all set up and your next question might be, well, what can I do with this stuff? In today's video, we're gonna be going over different commands, automations, and shortcuts that you can do with HomeKit and Siri. So stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Steve from the YouTube channel Steve Does and I wanna thank you for joining me here at reviews.org. So today we're gonna be covering some of the cool things that you can do with your new HomeKit and Siri connectivity. And that's gonna be covering different commands, things that you can say to your devices, different automations, which is a lot of fun to do and set up, and then shortcuts. Now, realistically, there probably should be dedicated videos to all of these topics right here, but in today's video, we are just gonna briefly cover all of these topics just to give you guys an idea of what you can do with each one of these. Now, before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos like this one. And with that said, let's get started. So using Siri to talk to your Apple devices is pretty easy to do, but how do you get more out of that feature? That is what we're gonna be talking about right now. So controlling basic smart home devices is pretty easy to do. Let me go ahead and load up the app here and we'll go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so we have devices here that I can turn on and off. So if I tap on this device right here, it's gonna turn the light on. Tap on it again and it'll turn the light off. I can also use my voice to turn that off. So I can say, hey Siri, turn on the Hue Iris and it turned it on. But if I don't want to specifically name out each device, I can do things like grouping them and specifically grouping them into rooms. So if I scroll all the way to the top and if I click on the home up at the top, I can see all of the different rooms that I have in my house. Now, if I tap outside of that, at the very bottom of the screen, we see the rooms tab. So tapping on the rooms tab is going to bring up the different rooms. And I can swipe side to side to go through the rooms right here. Right now we're looking at the office. So we've got that Hue Iris on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. So what I can do instead is I can say, hey Siri, turn on the lights. And what that did is it actually turned on all the lights in this room. Now, the reason I didn't have to specify this room is because this HomePod mini is also located in the office. So if we see right here in the middle, HomePod mini is also located in this room. So if I just say turn the lights on and off, it knows everything in its own room, it will control. So that is a good way to control groups of things is to put them into rooms. Now, if I wanna control a group that is outside of this room, I can say, hey Siri, turn on the master bedroom lights. Okay, the master bedroom lights are on. Perfect, and you see here, it turned on those lights. Now, if it's controlling something outside of its group, it's going to verbalize that to you and let you know what it actually did. Now, if we go back to the home screen, I'm gonna go ahead and let's say, hey Siri, turn off the lights in the office and the master bedroom. So you notice that I use the word and to control multiple groups. So you can either do that with multiple devices or multiple groups by using that and feature. It's pretty cool to do. Okay, the next thing that I wanted to talk about are scenes. So if you scroll up at the top here, we've got our different scenes. I've got my favorite scenes selected right here. And a scene is essentially going to run a different type of automation. So if I click and hold on this leaving home, this is what leaving home is going to do. It's going to essentially turn off all the lights in my house and it's going to lock my front door. So that is what my leaving home scene is going to do. I can go ahead and click on my morning one. So I press and hold on that one. My morning routine is going to turn on both lights in my room and it's also going to start playing music through the HomePod in the office. Now, another one that we can do is we can say good night. If I tap and hold on that one, it's gonna go through all the things that my good night scene does. And what this does is that it turns off all the lights in the house. It's going to close one of my shades all the way. It's gonna close the other shade just to 50%. And that's typically because I leave that window open and it is going to make sure that the front door is locked. So that is a cool way to set up different scenes to be able to group a bunch of different things together. Now, the next thing that I wanted to talk about is using the exception command. So what I can do here is that I can tell it to turn on, say, different lights in the house except for. So if we take a look at the screen here, I'm gonna say, hey Siri, turn on all the lights in the house except for the office. Okay, all the lights are on. 
So if you notice, all of the lights started popping on except for the two right here. So I'm gonna turn those on. These are the ones for the office. But you can use the accept rule if you want to omit something from your command. I find that really handy to use if I wanna turn on the lights in the house, but maybe the kids are taking a nap or sleeping and I don't wanna turn on the lights in their room. I can say turn on all the lights except for the kids room and I can get the job done without waking them up. Now the next cool tip for using commands is that you can use general levels. And what I mean by that is I can say dim the lights or turn them up some or set it to halfway. So you don't have to use specific things like 50% or 25%. You can use other phrasing too. So let's take a look right here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on both of my office lights and I'm gonna say, hey Siri, it's too bright in here. And what that's gonna do is it's going to drop the level by 25%. Now, if I want to just dim them a little bit, I can say, hey Siri, dim the lights a little bit. And what that's going to do is it's going to drop it by a percentage of 10%. So you can do and use different phrases like that. If you scroll down and look down here, I've got both of my shades set to 60%. So I can say, hey Siri, close the shades. And we see both shades are closing right here. All right, these guys are closing right now, but I'm gonna show you something in a second. Let's go ahead and do it right now. Hey Siri, open the shades halfway. So now these shades are going to open up to halfway, 50%. Let's take a look and see when they stop here in a second. And boom, right there, they both opened up just halfway. So that is another pretty cool thing that you can do right there. Now, another cool thing is that you can check on the status of your home with Siri. Now, whether that's gonna be on your phone or with the HomePod, so let's do, hey Siri, did I remember to lock the front door? You're in luck. Your Yale lock is already locked. Perfect, so the lock is already locked. I'm gonna go ahead and open up these windows all the way. Get a little bit more light in here so you guys can see me better. Now, in addition to that, depending on the devices that you have, you can ask things like, did I close all the windows in the house or is the garage door closed? So those are some other things that you can do with checking on the status of your house. Okay, the next thing that I wanted to talk about is automations. Now, this is a fun thing to do and play around with these devices right here. But at the very bottom tab, if we take a look, we see automations right here. I've got two that are set up right now, but there are so many things that you can do with automations right here. So if we take a look at the first one right here, it says, when I leave the house, go ahead and do these things. So I'm gonna tap on that. It's gonna say, when I leave the house, and it's gonna be using my iPhone as the trigger. So when I leave the geofencing area, it's gonna know that I've left the house. And what it is going to do is it's going to turn off the lights in the master bedroom. It's also going to turn off the thermostat and it's gonna turn off the lights in the office here. Now, if I want to, I can go ahead and add more accessories to this, having it make sure that it's turning off all the lights, or I can even have it run a scene. So if we notice that my good night scene from before turns off everything in the house, I can just say, when I leave the house, go ahead and just run my good night scene if I want to do something like that. Another one that we have here, this is one that I just set up a couple days ago that I really like, is that when I unlock my front door smart lock, it's automatically going to turn my porch lights on. So I don't have to keep my porch lights on all the time or at a certain time of day if I don't want to. What I have set up here, if we notice right here, it says when, when the front door yellow lock is unlocked and right below it, it says only at night. So this is only gonna happen at night. Go ahead and trigger this accessory. And that is my Caseta smart switch. So that switch down there controls the lights on the patio. So as soon as I do one action, which is unlock the door, it's automatically going to turn on my porch lights. I love that automation right there and super happy that this device does that. But there are so many more automations that you can do. You can have certain devices trigger other things. Something that I was gonna set up for you guys right here as a demo is I'm gonna go ahead and click on the plus sign. I'm gonna go ahead and click add automation here in the middle. And here are some of the different options that we have. So when people are arriving, when they're leaving, a time of day occurs, so you can set like different schedules, when an accessory is controlled, so that's gonna be one of your smart accessories, or when a sensor is detected. So I'm gonna click a sensor is detected. I'm gonna use the motion sensor in my office. So I'm gonna tap on that, click on next. So I'm gonna say when motion is detected, that's right, next. I'm gonna say, go ahead in the office, scroll down here, turn on my air purifier. So click on that one right here, click on next, turn off. We'll say turn off after 30 minutes. 
perfect. So we have a new one down here at the bottom. So anytime this motion sensor right here detects motion in the office, it is going to turn on the air purifier in this office. Once it stops detecting motion for 30 minutes, it will turn that device off. So now I don't have to worry about turning that device on and off. It's just automatically going to go off the trigger of the motion of that sensor. So like I said, there are tons of different combinations and things that you can do with the compatible smart devices in your house. All right, now automations are cool, but now we're going to be talking about shortcuts. Shortcuts are like setting up automations on steroids. You're essentially gonna be setting up scripts. It sounds more complicated than it really is, but let's go ahead and take a look. So here is the app right here. If you have the newest version of the iOS, it's gonna come built into it. Otherwise, you may have to go out and download it, but let's go ahead and launch shortcuts. So here are some of the shortcuts that I have set up. I have not played around with this a bunch, but I've got some cool ones set up here. Now, if you are new to this and you just want to kind of see what are some of the options, they do have some templates down in this gallery tab. So at the bottom right corner, I'm gonna click on gallery and it's gonna bring up some shortcuts that we can take a look at. So we've got starter shortcuts right here. So these are the ones that you can take a look at and go through and see if you wanna use any of these. You can do a block off an hour. So you can do that one if you wanna add that shortcut or not. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of that. We can do take a break. So it's going to perform 13 different actions here. I can tap on that to see what the 13 different actions are on here. So there's a lot going on in this one right here. We go ahead and back out of there. Let's go ahead and cancel out of this thing. Back out of galleries. Uh, we're gonna go back to my shortcuts at the bottom. And here are some of the shortcuts that I have set up right now. The first one is laundry timer. So if I tap on the three dots up here, what this is going to do is it's going to ask me how many more minutes is left in the laundry. It's gonna take that, it's gonna take the current date, it's going to add it to my calendar, it's going to set a reminder, so that way in that amount of time, I'm gonna get a pop-up on my phone of when the laundry is done. But the next one I wanted to do is washing your hands to music. So this is a new thing that washing your hands for 20 seconds is ideal for getting the best wash. So what this is going to do right here when I run this shortcut is that it's going to play music for 20 seconds on my phone. So that's a pretty cool little feature right there. Now, if we wanna get into something a little bit more complicated, we've got the next one right here, which is when do I need to leave by? So this is gonna take a lot of things into calculation. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the three dots up here. What you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to put in an address of where you want to go. From there, it's going to take into account maps. So it's probably gonna look at traffic and different routes you can take. We've got travel time. We're gonna divide that number by 60. We're gonna calculate the results. We're gonna give a specific date and time for this right here. We're gonna subtract five minutes and that's gonna give you time to park and walk into your desk if you're heading to work. And then we've got some other calculations and results down here. So this one is a pretty complicated one right here, but it is a template that was provided to me. So I did not come up with this one. I just went and found a template, liked it, said add to my shortcuts. I'm gonna plug in a few numbers and it's good to go. So if you are not that techie and not that into scripting different things, you can always go ahead and pull down these templates like this and then tweak them to how you want to use them. Well, that pretty much covers it in today's video. Out of the three topics that we talked about, commands, automations, and shortcuts, which are you the most excited about? Let me know in the comments below. If you guys wanna know anything more about HomeKit, Siri, HomePods, anything like that, check out the link below to reviews.org. If this video is helpful, give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. As always, I want to thank you for joining me here at reviews.org. I'll see you in the next video.